Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to book three, part two for the Law of One Raw Material. Uh, this next session, they kind of circle back a little bit to the Wanderers, which I love. And the questioners really tried to find out, um, you know, how a Wanderer gets activated, uh, which basically means how does a Wanderer or light worker know that they're a wanderer or a light worker because not all of them get activated to knowing um, many light workers or wanderers will go through their whole lives without really knowing where they came from or what the point of everything is but uh, the questioners they they were grasping at the fact that if a wanderer gets activated does that mean they have to have a close encounter with say an alien or someone from a higher dimension now that could be the case and I'm sure that has happened a lot but as someone who myself has been activated, um, that's pretty rare for it to happen like that. Most people, um, it, it happens in so many different ways to get activated and to know who you are and where you came from. And it doesn't happen all at once. It's not like as if, um, you know, you see something or you get a dream or something and, and all of a sudden you know everything it doesn't it doesn't work like that Dolores Cannon actually always had a great saying she says you know at first you don't feed a baby a steak for its first meal you know they have mother's milk for their first meal and as the baby grows then they start having you know a uh, formula and then cow's milk or pablum and you know crushed peas and then as the baby grows it can take on more and more and that's kind of like what it is for a wanderer or light worker uh, when you get awakened or go through an awakening uh, it, it comes in bits uh, a little bit at a time so you can handle it and not kind of get freaked out by a lot of stuff and I, I've learned a lot about that you know um, I got activated uh, over a year ago and I would say the first part of my activation was the opening of my heart chakra like my chest felt like the whole universe could collapse in on it because the heart chakra is very important especially if you're positively orientated because the green ray chakra is the bridge between the lower and higher densities and when it gets activated you you really feel it and negatively oriented entities um, they don't like they don't cross that bridge they try to stay in the lower densities because they feel very powerful there um, and that's kind of like their choice but um, for me you know when I got activated that was that was something that was so noticeable you know and and it's not subtle like I didn't ease into it I it felt like I hit a tree with my car going 90 miles an hour it was it was very quick and I think it's because my activation happened so much later in life now when so like I would say that's where it began and like this is not in the session but I'm just giving you guys some background of personal experience of basically a wanderer and what the questioners were trying to get answers for so being activated is not being visited by a UFO even though that can happen being activated is being made aware of the facets of our universe and creation itself and how it functions and where your placement and perspective is within it and your understanding gets broader and broader now that being said um, just like an evolution of the soul of the evolution of a wanderer you know more and more things will start happening and some of it it, it does happen slowly and just when I think you know um, there's not much else you know something else will happen uh, for instance and I know this happens to a lot of you out there who are wanderers and and as more things happen to them um, because I have the knowing and I know that that is a lot of the uh, indigo chakra basically you know I you know the downloads that I get uh, is because my crown chakra is opened and the thing is because I'm actually really actively working on getting downloads and getting more information because I'm trying to share it and help other people understand it what happens to a lot of us is it starts spilling over into a lot of other things that um, will will happen if you're constantly working on it now some people don't want this and some people do and some people want it more and more and more and they like they're ready for it and they don't know why nothing's happening 
it's it's because you think you're you're ready for it, but you're not really. Again, you're a baby. You, you, I know you want a steak, but you need to eat your pablum, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. So for me, you know, and I haven't talked about this to a lot of other people, but I, and I was I wasn't going to, but I'm gonna just go ahead. Um, I'm starting to get entities coming into my house, um, and sometimes they try to scare me. But I know that when you see these entities, sometimes you don't know if they're negatively or positively orientated. But what I know is that if I confront them with love, uh, if they're negatively orientated, like they are out of here. Like they don't want any part of that because uh, it's almost as if um, when you get activated as a wanderer, you're, you're almost like turning a, a light on in darkness and all of a sudden everyone who's in a different density and realm will take note of it. and kind of come and check it out and so these things started happening to me and honestly I didn't really get that scared when entities started coming into you know my house in my room and sometimes they're like walking on my bed and (laughs) and I and I'm like as soon as I like you know take a wander around I you know they they tend to go away then I start hearing them talking to me and I'm like is this what happens to everybody you know and I don't have a lot of other people that are going through this that I talk about or you know talk with and and so a lot of times I have to kind of go online just to see what's happening to other people so but for me um, yes this is starting to happen more and more to me and as I constantly work at it more things happen now the one thing that I do want to let you guys know that they did talk about in the sessions is that uh, when they're dealing with wanderers and negatively orientated um, entities that are uh, going to activate another negative, you know, uh, service to self, um, you know, someone like a human here on Earth that is really evil, and sometimes um, a higher density negatively oriented entity will come in and and activate them further to polarize them further negative to ensure that they graduated to service to self. Now, sometimes the way they do this is really to invoke fear on to someone. Now, the one thing that I'll tell you is that the opposite of love is fear. You you would think and you automatically want to say, well, the opposite of love is hate. Um, but it's not and there's a lot of examples of um, a spectrum of emotion and love is at the top and at the very bottom is fear and right above fear is shame like the opposite of love is fear and if you think about it 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 does make sense because when you love something you want it close to you you go towards it you hold it dear you um, you know love is something that you want to be close to and move towards. You'll run towards love. You'll run into the arms of a lover, right? Now, if you hate something, you, you're not running away from it. If you hate something, you're still in its presence, but you have a different emotion towards it even. But fear is when you run in the exact opposite direction. You try to get as far away as possible from whatever that thing is. So it is the polar opposite of love is fear so whenever you think about um, service to others as opposed of service to self um, service to self is always going to invoke fear that's why um, you know if if negatively oriented entities like will try just to scare you not try to um, invoke hate in you and positively oriented entities will will make you feel loved right and so that's a lot a lot of the times when we die you know we get the feeling of love we get the feeling of the creator and that's why it feels like love and it's always described that way right for the most part so um, yeah I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background about me uh, because they do talk about uh, the wanderers a little bit in the 53rd session now at the end of this video, uh, the 54th session is extremely complex and you might want to listen to it a few times, but at the end of this video, I will do my very best to uh, break down some of the things that they're trying to talk about and try to make it a little bit more clear for you because it's really involved um, in some really kind of complex topics. 
and um, I really had to um, take actually quite a few more notes that I normally do for these sessions. So anyway, I will talk more about that at the end of the session, but let's get into it. Uh, here is part two um, in book three of The Law of One Raw Material. The Law of One, book three, session 53, May 25th, 1981. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, I would first like to ask what is the instrument's condition and then ask two questions for her. She would like to know if she can now do one exercise period per day, and also is the pain she feels prior to doing a session due to an Orion attack? Ra, I am Ra. The instrument's condition is as previously stated. In answer to the question of exercise, now that the intensive period is over, this instrument may, if it chooses, exercise one period rather than two. In scanning this instrument's physical complex distortions we find the current period of exercise at the limit of this instrument's strength. This is well in the long run due to accumulative building up of the vital energies. In the short run it is wearying to this entity. Thus we suggest the entity be aware of our previous admonitions regarding other aids to appropriate bodily distortions. In answer to the second query we may say that the physical complex difficulties prior to contact with our social memory complex are due to the action of the subconscious will of the instrument. This will is extremely strong and requires the mind-body-spirit complex to reserve all available physical and vital energies for the contact. Thus the discomforts are experienced due to the dramatic distortion towards physical weakness while this energy is diverted. The entity is, it may be noted, also under psychic attack and this intensifies pre-existing conditions and is responsible for the cramping and the dizziness as well as mind complex distortions. Questioner, thank you. I would like to know if, name, may attend one of these sessions in the very near future? Ra, I am Ra. The mind-body-spirit complex, name, belongs with this group in the spirit and is welcome. You may request that special meditative periods be set aside until the entity sits with this working. We might suggest that a photograph of the one known as, name, be sent to this entity with his writing upon it indicating love and light. This held while meditating will bring the entity into peaceful harmony with each of you so that there be no extraneous waste of energy while greetings are exchanged between two entities, both of whom have a distortion towards solitude and shyness. As you would call it. The same might be done with a photograph of the entity. Name, for the one known as, name. Questioner, thank you. During my trip to Laramie certain things became apparent to me with respect to dissemination of the first book of the Law of One to those who have had experiences with UFOs and other wanderers. And I will have to ask some questions now that I may have to include in Book One to eliminate a misunderstanding that I am perceiving as a possibility in Book One. Therefore, these questions, although for the most part transient, are aimed at eliminating certain distortions with respect to the understanding of the material in Book One. I hope that I am using the correct approach here. You may not be able to answer some of them, but that's all right. We'll just go on to others then if you can't answer the ones I ask. Can you tell me of the various techniques used by the service to others positively oriented confederation contacts with the people of this planet, the various forms and techniques of making contact? Ra, I am Ra. We could. Questioner, would you do this please? Ra, I am Ra. The most efficient mode of contact is that which you experience at this space-time. The infringement upon free will is greatly undesired. Therefore, those entities which are wanderers upon your plane of illusion will be the only subjects for the thought projections which make up the so-called close encounters and meetings between positively oriented social memory complexes and wanderers. Questioner, could you give me an example of one of these meetings between a social memory complex and a wanderer as to what the wanderer would experience? Ra, I am Ra. One such example of which you are familiar is that of the one known as Morris.1 in this case the previous contact which other entities in this entity circle of friends experienced was negatively oriented. However, you will recall that the entity, Morris, was impervious to this contact and could not see, with a physical optical apparatus, this contact. However, the inner voice alerted the one known as Morris to go by itself to another place and there an entity with the thought form shape and appearance of the other contact appeared and gazed at this entity. Thus awakening in it the desire to seek the truth of this occurrence and of the experiences of its incarnation in general. One this refers to case number one in Secrets of the UFO by D. T. Elkins with Carla L. Rugert, Louisville, Kentucky, LL Research, 1976, p. 10-11. The feeling of being awakened or activated is the goal of this type of contact. 
The duration and imagery used varies depending upon the subconscious expectations of the wanderer which is experiencing this opportunity for activation. Questioner, in a close encounter by a confederation type of craft I am assuming that this close encounter is with a thought form type of craft. Have wanderers within the past few years had close encounters with landed thought form type of craft? Ra, I am Ra. This has occurred although it is much less common than the Orion type of so-called close encounter. We may note that in a universe of unending unity the concept of a close encounter is humorous, for are not all encounters of a nature of self with self? Therefore, how can any encounter be less than very, very close? Questioner, well, talking about this type of encounter of self to self, have any wanderers of a positive polarization ever had a so-called close encounter with the Orion or negatively oriented polarization? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, why does this occur? Ra, I am Ra. When it occurs it is quite rare and occurs either due to the Orion entity's lack of perception of the depth of positivity to be encountered or due to the Orion entity's desire to, shall we say, attempt to remove this positivity from this plane of existence. Orion tactics normally are those which choose the simple distortions of mind which indicate less mental and spiritual complex activity. Questioner, I have become aware of a very large variation in the contact with individuals. Could you give me general examples of the methods used by the Confederation to awaken or partially awaken the wanderers they contact? Ra, I am Ra. The methods used to awaken wanderers are varied. The center of each approach is the entrance into the conscious and subconscious in such a way as to avoid causing fear and to maximize the potential for an understandable subjective experience which has meaning for the entity. Many such occur in sleep, others in the midst of many activities during the waking hours. The approach is flexible and does not necessarily include the close encounter syndrome as you are aware. Questioner, what about the physical examination syndrome? How does that relate to wanderers and confederation and Orion contacts? Ra, I am Ra. The subconscious expectations of entities cause the nature and detail of thought form experience offered by confederation thought form entities. Thus if a wanderer expects a physical examination, it will perforce be experienced with as little distortion towards alarm or discomfort as is allowable by the nature of the expectations of the subconscious distortions of the wanderer. Questioner, well, are those who are taken on both confederation and Orion craft then experiencing a seeming physical examination? Ra, I am Ra. Your query indicates incorrect thinking. The Orion group uses the physical examination as a means of terrifying the individual and causing it to feel the feelings of an advanced second density being such as a laboratory animal. The sexual experiences of some are a subtype of this experience. The intent is to demonstrate the control of the Orion entities over the Terran inhabitant. The thought form experiences are subjective and, for the most part, do not occur in this density. Questioner, well, we have a large spectrum of entities on Earth with respect to harvestability, both positively oriented and negatively oriented. With the Orion group target and on the ends of this spectrum, both positively and negatively oriented, for contact with Earth entities? Ra, I am Ra. This query is somewhat difficult to accurately answer. However, we shall attempt to do so. The most typical approach of Orion entities is to choose what you might call the weaker-minded entity that it might suggest a greater amount of Orion philosophy to be disseminated. Some few Orion entities are called by more highly polarized negative entities of your space-time nexus. In this case they share information just as we are now doing. However, this is a risk for the Orion entities due to the frequency with which the harvestable negative planetary entities then attempt to bid in order the Orion contact just as these entities bid planetary negative contacts. The resulting struggle for mastery, if lost, is damaging to the polarity of the Orion group. Similarly, a mistaken Orion contact with highly polarized positive entities can wreak havoc with Orion troops unless these crusaders are able to depolarize the entity mistakenly contacted. This occurrence is almost unheard of. Therefore, the Orion group prefers to make physical contact only with the weaker-minded entity. Questioner then in general we could say that if an individual has a close encounter with a UFO or any other type experience that seems to be UFO related, he must look to the heart of the encounter and the effect upon him to determine whether it was Orion or Confederation contact. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. If there is fear and doom, the contact was quite likely of a negative nature. If the result is hope, friendly feelings, and the awakening of a positive feeling of purposeful service to others, the marks of confederation contact are evident. Questioner, thank you. 
I did not wish to create the wrong impression with the material that we are including in book one. I may find it necessary to add some of this material. As I say, I know that it is transient, but I believe it is necessary for a full understanding or, shall I say, a correct approach to the material. I'll ask a few questions here, but if you do not care to answer them we'll save them. I would like to ask, however, if you can tell me what, for the most part, the confederation entities look like? Ra, I am Ra. The fourth density confederation entity looks variously depending upon the, shall we say, derivation of its physical vehicle. Questioner, do some of them look just like us? Could they pass for earth people? Ra, I am Ra. Those of this nature are most often fifth density. Questioner, I assume that the same answer would apply to the Orion group. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Is there any other query of a brief nature we may answer? Questioner, I apologize for asking many transient questions during this session. I felt it necessary to include some of this material so that those wanderers and others reading the first book of the Law of One would not get the wrong impression with respect to their experiences in contacts. I am sorry for any problems that I might have caused. I will just ask if there is anything that we can do to aid the contact or to aid the instrument? Ra, I am Ra. The instrument is well. Please guard your alignments carefully. We leave you now, my friends, in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the infinite creator. Adonai. The Law of One, Book 3, Session 54. May 29, 1981. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, I would like to trace the energy that I assume comes from the logos. I will make a statement and let you correct me and expand on my concept. From the logos comes all frequencies of radiation of light. These frequencies of radiation make up all of the densities of experience that are created by that logos. I am assuming that the planetary system of our sun, in all of its densities, is the total of the experience created by our sun as a logos. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, I am assuming that the different frequencies are separated, as we have said, into the seven colors, and I am assuming that each of these colors may be the basic frequency for a sub-logos of our sun logos and that a sub-logos or, shall we say, an individual may activate any one of these basic frequencies or colors and use the body that is generated from the activation of the frequency or color. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. If we grasp your query correctly this is not correct in that the sub-sub-logos resides, not in dimensionalities, but only in co-creators, or mind-body-spirit complexes. Questioner, what I meant was that a mind-body-spirit complex can then have any body activated that is one of the seven rays. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct in the same sense as it is correct to state that anyone may play a complex instrument which develops a euphonious harmonic vibration complex such as your piano and can play this so well that it might offer concerts to the public. As you would say. In other words, although it is true that each true color vehicle is available potentially there is skill and discipline needed in order to avail the self of the more advanced or lighter vehicles. Questioner, I have made these statements to get to the basic question which I wish to ask. It is a difficult question to ask. We have, coming from the sub-logos we call our sun, intelligent energy. This intelligent energy is somehow modulated or distorted so that it ends up as a mind-body-spirit complex with certain distortions of personality, which are necessary for the mind-body-spirit complex or mental portion of that complex to undistort in order to conform once more with the original intelligent energy. First, I want to know if my statement on that is correct, and, secondly, I want to know why this is the way that it is and if there is any answer other than the first distortion of the law of one for this? Ra, I am Ra. This statement is substantially correct. If you will penetrate the nature of the first distortion in its application of self-knowing self, you may begin to distinguish the hallmark of an infinite creator, variety. Were there no potentials for misunderstanding and, therefore, understanding, there would be no experience. Questioner, okay. Once a mind-body-spirit complex becomes aware of this process it then decides that in order to have the full abilities of the creator it is necessary to reharmonize its thinking with the original creative thought and precise vibration or frequency of vibration. In order to do this it is necessary to discipline the personality so that it precisely conforms to the original thought, and this is broken into seven areas of discipline each corresponding to one of the colors of the spectrum. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. 
This statement, though correct, bears great potential for being misunderstood. The precision with which each energy center matches the original thought lies not in the systematic placement of each energy nexus but rather in the fluid and plastic placement of the balanced blending of these energy centers in such a way that intelligent energy is able to channel itself with minimal distortion. The mind-body-spirit complex is not a machine. It is rather what you might call a tone poem. Questioner, do all mind-body-spirit complexes in the entire creation have seven energy centers? Ra, I am Ra. These energy centers are in potential in macrocosm from the beginning of creation by the Logos. Coming out of timelessness, all is prepared. This is so of the infinite creation. Questioner, then I will assume that the Creator in its intelligent appraisal of the ways of knowing itself, created the concept of the seven areas of knowing. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is partially incorrect. The Logos creates light. The nature of this light thus creates the nature of the catalytic and energetic levels of experience in the creation. Thus it is that the highest of all honor duties, that given to those of the next octave, is the supervision of light in its manifestations during the experiential times, if you will, of your cycles. Questioner, I will make another statement. The mind-body-spirit complex may choose, because of the first distortion, the mental configuration that is sufficiently displaced from the configuration of the intelligent energy in a particular frequency or color of in-streaming energy so as to block a portion of in-streaming energy in that particular frequency or color. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. Yes. Questioner, can you give me an idea of the maximum percentage of this energy it is possible to block in any one color? Ra, I am Ra. There may be, in an entity's pattern of in-streaming energy, a complete blockage in any energy or color or combination of energies or colors. Questioner, okay. Then I assume that the first distortion is the motivator or what allows this blockage. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. We wish no quibbling but prefer to avoid the use of terms such as the verb, to allow. Free will does not allow, nor would predetermination disallow, experiential distortions. Rather the law of confusion offers a free reach for the energies of each mind-body-spirit complex. The verb, to allow, would be considered pejorative in that it suggests a polarity between right and wrong or allowed and not allowed. This may seem a minuscule point. However, to our best way of thinking it bears some weight. Questioner, thank you. It bears weight to my own way of thinking also. I appreciate what you have told me. Now, I would like to then consider the origin of catalyst. First we have the condition of mind-body-spirit complex which, as a function of the first distortion, has reached a condition of blockage or partial blockage of one or more energy centers. I will assume that catalyst is necessary only if there is at least partial blockage of one energy center. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. No. Questioner, could you tell me why? Ra, I am Ra. While it is a primary priority to activate or unblock each energy center, it is also a primary priority at that point to begin to refine the balances between the energies so that each tone of the chord of total vibratory beingness resonates in clarity, tune, and harmony with each other energy. This balancing, tuning, and harmonizing of the self is most central to the more advanced or adept mind-body-spirit complex. Each energy may be activated without the beauty that is possible through the disciplines and appreciations of personal energies or what you might call the deeper personality or soul identity. Questioner, let me make an analogy that I have just thought of. A seven-stringed musical instrument may be played by deflecting each string of full deflection and releasing it producing notes. Instead of producing the notes this way the individual creative personality could deflect each string the proper amount in the proper sequence producing music. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. In the balanced individual the energies lie waiting for the hand of the creator to pluck harmony. Questioner, I would like then to trace the evolution of catalyst upon the mind-body-spirit complexes and how it comes into use and is fully used to create this tuning. I assume that the sub-logos that formed our tiny part of the creation using the intelligence of the logos of which it is a part, provides the base catalyst that will act upon mind-body complexes and mind-body-spirit complexes before they have reached a state of development where they can begin to program their own catalyst. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is partially correct. The sublogos offers the catalyst at the lower levels of energy, the first triad, these have to do with the survival of the physical complex. The higher centers gain catalyst from the biases of the mind-body-spirit complex itself in response to all random and directed experiences. 
Thus the less developed entity will perceive the catalyst about it in terms of survival of the physical complex with the distortions which are preferred. The more conscious entity being conscious of the catalytic process will begin to transform the catalyst offered by the sublogos into catalyst which may act upon the higher energy nexi. Thus the sublogos can offer only a basic skeleton, shall we say, of catalyst. The muscles and flesh having to do with the, shall we say, survival of wisdom, love, compassion, and service are brought about by the action of the mind-body-spirit complex on basic catalysts so as to create a more complex catalyst which may in turn be used to form distortions within these higher energy centers. The more advanced the entity, the more tenuous the connection between the sublogos and the perceived catalyst until, finally, all catalyst is chosen, generated, and manufactured by the self, for the self. Questioner which entities incarnate at this time on this planet would be in that category of manufacturing all of their catalyst. Ra, I am Ra. We find your query indeterminate but can respond that the number of those which have mastered outer catalyst completely is quite small. Most of those harvestable at this space-time nexus have partial control over the outer illusion and are using the outer catalyst to work upon some bias which is not yet in balance. Questioner, in the case of service to self-polarization, what type of catalyst would entities following this path program when they reach the level of programming their own catalyst? Ra, I am Ra. The negatively oriented entity will program for maximal separation from and control over all those things and conscious entities which it perceives as being other than the self. Questioner, a positively oriented entity may select a certain narrow path of thinking and activities during an incarnation and program conditions that would create physical pain if this were not followed. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, would a negatively oriented entity do anything like this? Could you give me an example? Ra, I am Ra. A negatively oriented individual mind-body-spirit complex will ordinarily program for wealth, ease of existence, and the utmost opportunity for power. Thus many negative entities burst with the physical complex distortion you call health. However, a negatively oriented entity may choose a painful condition in order to improve the distortion toward the so-called negative emotive mentations such as anger, hatred, and frustration. Such an entity may use an entire incarnative experience honing a blunt edge of hatred or anger so that it may polarize more towards the negative or separated pole. Questioner, prior to incarnation, as an entity becomes more aware of the process of evolution and has selected a path whether it be positive or negative, at some point the entity becomes aware of what it wants to do with respect to unblocking and balancing its energy centers. At that point it is able to program for the life experience those catalytic experiences that will aid it in its process of unblocking and balancing. Is that correct? Ra, I am Ra. That is correct. Questioner, the purpose then, of what we call the incarnate physical state, seems to be wholly or almost wholly that of experiencing the program catalyst and then evolving as a function of that catalyst. Is that correct? Ra, I am Ra. We shall restate for clarity the purpose of incarnative existence is evolution of mind, body, and spirit. In order to do this it is not strictly necessary to have catalyst. However, without catalyst the desire to evolve and the faith in the process do not normally manifest and thus evolution occurs not. Therefore, catalyst is programmed and the program is designed for the mind-body-spirit complex for its unique requirements. Thus it is desirable that a mind-body-spirit complex be aware of and hearken to the voice of its experiential catalyst, gleaning from it that which it incarnated to glean. Questioner, then it seems that those upon the positive path as opposed to those on the negative path would have precisely the reciprocal objective in the first three rays, red, orange, and yellow. Each path would be attempting to utilize the rays in precisely the opposite manners. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. It is partially and even substantially correct. There is an energy in each of the centers needed to keep the mind-body-spirit complex, which is the vehicle for experience, in correct conformation and composition. Both negative and positive entities do well to reserve this small portion of each center for the maintenance of the integrity of the mind-body-spirit complex. After this point, however, it is correct that the negative will use the three lower centers for separation from and control over others by sexual means, by personal assertion, and by action in your societies. Contrary-wise, the positively oriented entity will be transmuting strong red ray sexual energy into green ray energy transfers and radiation in blue and indigo and will be similarly transmuting selfhood and place in society into energy transfer situations in which the entity may merge with and serve others and then, finally, radiate unto others without expecting any transfer in return. 
Questioner, can you describe the energy that enters these energy centers? Can you describe its path from its origin, its form, and its effect? I don't know if this is possible. Ra, I am Ra. This is partially possible. Questioner, would you please do that? Ra, the origin of all energy is the action of free will upon love. The nature of all energy is light. The means of its ingress into the mind-body-spirit complex is duple. Firstly, there is the inner light which is Polaris of the self, the guiding star. This is the birthright and true nature of all entities. This energy dwells within. The second point of ingress is the polar opposite of the North Star, shall we say, and may be seen, if you wish to use the physical body as an analog for the magnetic field, as coming through the feet from the earth and through the lower point of the spine. This point of ingress of the universal light energy is undifferentiated until it begins its filtering process through the energy centers. The requirements of each center and the efficiency with which the individual has learned to tap into the inner light determine the nature of the use made by the entity of these in streamings. Questioner, does experiential catalyst follow the same path? This may be a dumb question. Ra, I am Ra. This is not a pointless question. For catalyst and the requirements or distortions of the energy centers are two concepts linked as tightly as two strands of rope. Questioner, you mentioned in an earlier session that the experiential catalyst was first experienced by the South Pole and appraised with respect to its survival value. That's why I asked the question. Would you expand on this concept? Ra, I am Ra. We have addressed the filtering process by which incoming energies are pulled upwards according to the distortions of each energy center and the strength of will or desire emanating from the awareness of inner light. If we may be more specific, please query with specificity. Questioner, I'll make this statement which may be somewhat distorted and then let you correct it. We have, coming through the feet and base of the spine, the total energy that the mind-body-spirit complex will receive in the way of what we call light. Each energy center then filters out and uses a portion of this energy, red through violet. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is largely correct. The exceptions are as follows. The energy ingress ends with indigo. The violet ray is a thermometer or indicator of the whole. Questioner, as this energy is absorbed by the energy centers at some point it is not only absorbed into the being but radiates through the energy center outwardly. I believe this begins at the blue center and also occurs in the indigo and violet. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. Firstly, we would state that we had not finished answering the previous query and may thus answer both in part by stating that in the fully activated entity, only that small portion of in-streaming light needed to tune the energy center is used. The great remainder being free to be channeled and attracted upwards. To answer your second question more fully we may say that it is correct that radiation without the necessity of response begins with blue ray although the green ray, being the great transitional ray, must be given all careful consideration. For until transfer of energy of all types has been experienced and mastered to a great extent, there will be blockages in the blue and indigo radiations. Again, the violet emanation is, in this context, a resource from which, through indigo, intelligent infinity may be contacted. The radiation thereof will not be violet ray but rather green, blue, or indigo depending upon the nature of the type of intelligence which infinity has brought through into discernible energy. The green ray type of radiation in this case is the healing, the blue ray the communication and inspiration, the indigo that energy of the adept which has its place in faith. Questioner, what if a mind-body-spirit complex feels a feeling in meditation at the indigo center, what is he feeling? Ra, I am Ra. This will be the last full query of this working. One who feels this activation is one experiencing in streaming set that energy center to be used either for the unblocking of this center, for its tuning to match the harmonics of its other energy centers, or to activate the gateway to intelligent infinity. We cannot be specific for each of these three workings as experienced by the entity which feels this physical complex distortion. Is there a brief query before we leave this instrument? Questioner, I just would ask if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact? Ra, I am Ra. Please be aware of the need for the support of the instrument's neck. All is well. I leave you, my friends, in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, then, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. 
Okay, that session had a lot in it. Uh, you might want to listen to it again uh, at the end of this video just to try to grasp everything that went on, but let's try to break it down. Uh, they started off with talking about the Logos, uh, basically our universe and how our universe functions. And it's based by the magic number of seven. You know, we have seven uh, chakra systems and we have seven Logos and seven sub logos. So our reality, our universe um, kind of multiplies by seven in a polarization, you know, uh, parallel universe reality. Um, and it expands out in that way as almost like a law by design. It was designed this way and it functions this way. And so it makes it a little bit easier to understand that our universe, our logos is based by the number seven. And when you look at the chakra system, it's like a roadmap to basically how our universe, how our souls, how the one infinite creator designed it and how we all work and how it all ties in together. And they were trying to wrap their heads around this a little bit in this section. Now, if you look at the chakra system, they talk about the red, um, orange and yellow chakras, which are the lower chakra systems. It's um, your, you know, the basic instinct um, is is brought in like survival instinct is brought in through those lower chakras and the thing is negatively orientated um, entities um, kind of stay within those lower chakra systems because they feel very powerful in them and they stay there and they just make those ones more and more powerful now the questioners were trying to figure out what the um, higher vibration chakras like the green ray the blue um, you know, the indigo and how to activate them and and how to um, become more awake basically is what they were talking about. And Ra um, used musical instruments as an example. And basically what he was trying to get at is that the first part of this entire process is to first know that um, there are higher systems that we can activate and learn and practice and use and get better at it and then work our way up into our inigo, our crown chakra. And he was basically saying, you know, you, you know things and you don't know things. Like, you know things that you don't know. Uh, for instance, you know you don't know how to speak Chinese, but you know Chinese exists. Um, but how do you know things that you don't know? right? First, you have to know them. And he used the piano um, as an example. Like, once you know a piano even exists, well, then you can might learn how to use it. And when you practice using it, like, we're going to use the example of the chakra system in the Blu-ray. Once you discover that the Blu-ray chakra exists, you're going to learn how to use it. And the more you learn how to use it, the better you're going to get at it. And so just like, you know, a piano. First, you got to learn that uh, there even is such an instrument of a piano, and then you got to learn how to use it. And that's how he was trying to get you to understand how these systems work and how you can um, raise kind of like your vibration and your awareness to activating them. And he basically was getting at once every um, chakra or, you know, is activated to the crown chakra, basically what that means is you would reach oneness. And they asked uh, Ra how many people have reached this. And the number is very small, like maybe Jesus, maybe Buddha, Krishna, like there's, there's really not a lot of people that have reached oneness um, in this reality. Basically knowing um, every vibration, every density of the universe and be able to feel the consciousness in absolute everything, whether it's a tree or a rock or a person or a, an alien, like you would feel and, and know everything. And that's basically what oneness is. And if you reached um, and activated every catalyst and every chakra that that's what that would be and very very few people um, have reached that and Ra even did say that and another big thing to know like you, when you know things you didn't know before but now you know them and what Ra was trying to get at with that is that uh, we can create our own reality and this is something that well, you did, we didn't know that we could do that. I mean, you mean I've been creating my own reality this entire time? I didn't know I was doing that, but you were. 
but the thing is, if you didn't know that you were doing that, you didn't know that, you know, you had control and then you get to practice it. Now, Rob was talking about when you learn that we create our own reality, if you're service to self, basically what you're going to be doing is trying to create more things for yourself. So you're going to create more money. You're going to create more power and more influence over people to gain um, a hierarchy above them. Once you learn that you can do this, uh, those are the kind of things uh, a service to self entity would do. But if you're service to other entity that knows that you can create a reality, um, you are going to kind of, you know, you're going to do things like uh, try to manifest a uh, peace on earth, you know, so that no one suffers in a utopian society. You know, that's kind of the things that you'll start doing if you're service to others. And the reason why you're going to be doing things like that is because you're going to be connected to others. And that's why you go service to others because if someone suffers you feel that suffering so you want to cure all suffering so you can just feel happiness and love so when you know that you can create that reality those are the kinds of things that a service to other um, entity will start to do so they're very different and Rob was trying to get that point um, across but it didn't it didn't seem very clear uh, in the sessions I actually had to really take a lot of notes um, to kind of figure out what Rob's trying to get at there. But yeah, that's basically what he's doing. If you're negatively orientated, if you're committed to the path of orientation service to self, you're going to end up incarnating on earth into lives that are full of pain and suffering and fear to um, really harden your path, right? So you can um, graduate service to self into the fourth and fifth densities. And and so you wonder why some people would um, choose a life that is horrible here on earth. Sometimes, you know, uh, you'll choose it in order to expand because what Ra is talking about here is the whole point of life here on earth and the graduation to 4D is basically to um, go behind the veil of forgetting and if you're going to be orientating service to self, the whole point is to wake up while you're on this side of the veil and remember that you are an infinite being. Like There really isn't a death. It's just um, a perspective for the point of expansion. So the creator, the, all the you know consciousness, source consciousness can know itself better. And it knows itself better if you can become awake when you're on um, this side of the veil to how things work and be able to orientate yourself and improve and activate your chakras more and more and more while you're incarnated here is the cause for great expansion and is the cause for the creator kind of knowing itself better. And and um, that's kind of like the point that Ra was, uh, you know, trying to get across when he's talking about, um, you know, the pain and suffering here on earth, um, as opposed to, you know, people that have like happy lives and are positive energy flowing, right? And they kind of ended a little bit again on um, the Connie Looney experience, the, the full activation of our chakra system and how that happens. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit in the past videos, but basically it means that the green ray um, chakra, like the heart chakra, is the bridge of activation. Um, you can't really skip any chakra when um, you're, you're, you're being activated and, and when you go through a Kanan Luni experience. But the heart chakra is um, a catalyst to the awakening, the bridge to awaken you to um, all the higher densities. And um, when you when you cross that bridge, basically, when you cross the green ray heart chakra is basically um, the major step to the Kanan Luni experience, you know, all chakras being activated. Now, they were always trying to um, figure out, well, when do they get activated? How do you activate them? When? How do you know? You know, and he, they started like some some people, you know, just like me, I felt I felt my green ray being activated. And they talked about how, you know, sometimes when people are in meditation, um, they can feel their crown chakra uh, being activated. They can feel the uh, sensation in their crown um, during meditation. And that's fine. Like, it's not like, again, um, 
when you go to an instrument, and I think they use, I forget, they use a string instrument in uh, this session for this part. But I would say there's a difference between, say, discovering a piano exists and going up and just striking one key and making a sound. Basically is when you feel a chakra opening and activating, it's kind of like that. You, you stroke one key and you heard a sound. But that doesn't mean you're ready to, you know, be Beethoven and write a symphony. You know, knowing uh, you have a chakra that exists and feeling it for the first time is like you striking one key of the piano. And the point is to keep practicing and learn how to play um, and then, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star next. And then next thing you know, you're, you know, you can keep going. And when you're Beethoven uh, writing symphonies, well, then you've reached oneness, basically. And that was a very intense uh, session. There was a lot of material in it. Some of it was very complex. Sometimes the way Ra talks could be hard to understand. So yeah, just keep listening to it a few times and even go through all of these sessions all over, um, over and over again. It doesn't matter if you listen to something a hundred times, you're going to get a different piece of information out of it every time. So I absolutely love this material. I'm really happy I can bring it to you in this way. And I'm hoping you guys are getting um, um, a lot out of these sessions and hopefully my commentary is helping you and is making sense. Please leave me all your questions and comments in the description below. Uh, be sure to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in part three of uh, book three of The Law of One. Thanks for listening guys.